Hi there. Good morning from Overton Lake. This is Overton Lake. Sitting behind us. Glorious. Overton Lake. And under us. Yes. And we're beside the Fairy Meadows, um, well, campground visitor center. I'm not sure exactly. I don't think it's a campground, is it? I don't know if there's, I think there's a campground near here. Oh, but. it's like a country park. It's huge and it's quite wonderful. Yeah. And there is a uh, steam train nearby, although we didn't see it in operation. And there's also a little mini train, isn't there? We saw yeah. the track. Yeah. And there's lots of play areas and it's just really nice. Yeah, it's quite a pretty, pretty little spot. Um, and fun to more up at. Um, <laughs> yeah, we took a walk around the lake this morning. Well, we took around the sort of two lakes that are joined together and we took a walk around the smaller one. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. The moorings here are great. They're only 24 hours. I wish we could stay another day. Yeah, uh, it would be worth it for that. Also, good Wi-Fi. But um, turns out we're a multi-hour walk away from Peterbrook because Joe had to go I didn't have to, to it was a deliberate. But the walk was fine because I've been doing these long walks anyway and it was a good excuse for me to have a training walk. Trouble is, I didn't go until 10 to 5. Yeah, didn't time it quite correctly. So yeah, so it was walking back and then it was 7 o'clock and it started getting dark and the second half of the walk is all through the country park. So and I, it went like pitch dark. I was so, like, Michael, can you come and meet me? So I got George ready and then we met a, a viewer who was calling to me from the side of the the lake. So I just heard this, Michael, Joe, <laughs> open the window. Oh, hi, you know. Um, and he was just taking a run and happened to see us. And that was really nice. So thanks, you know, hi, uh, it was nice to meet you. And uh, and he was nice enough to come along on a walk with me to help find you, which was good because somebody had a light when I didn't. Um, yeah. And you found me and it was pitch dark. It was, I did it find was not you. A good, good However, I'm going to tell everybody else to make sure that they're signed into iCloud and that you actually have your um, find my friends or share my location thing I enabled. I trouble because I couldn't get it to work. Yeah, and a couple of text messages with, here's my Google Maps location, and each time it had a different Google path, I'm like, no, how am I supposed to know which one? Yeah. <laughs> well, it did. They had two, and one was blue, and then one was gone, and then you were on the other one, and I'm just like, I moved. Anyway, we found each other, so that's the main thing. And it's a miracle we found each other, but it was a miracle we found each other the first time, so... That's true. Yeah. <laughs> if we can find each other in the world, then we can find each other in a little country park. Somehow. In Peterborough. Yes. Anyway, today we are heading west, upstream, towards Northampton eventually. Yeah, eventually. Um, we're not sure how we're gonna how far we're going to make it today. We're just going to go until we've had enough. Yeah, we've had a couple of listings of where the moorings are on the way up there. Simon on Scholar Gypsy has sent us uh, a, a nice little roundup of which the best ones are and everything. Um, we also probably should join the Friends of the River Neen. I think it's only £12 because um, they've got lots of moorings and the boat that turned up after us yesterday said that their moorings are much nicer. So. Yeah. I'm so happy to join them, I just don't know how. Well, you can do it online. So. Okay, good. But um, you need to fill in a form, so we'll need to do it on the Apple where we can save it and over and send it, it and there. Right. that malarkey. Okay. So malarkey will be involved, but definitely worth doing. Right. Uh, we are about to be bombarded by a couple of more hens, which seems... Okay, never mind. A triple of more hens. It, well, a triple a tru of more. A triple. It looked like they were in launch position. Instead, they veered off at the last second and stopped, so we're good. It's because you stared them out. You looked at them and you were like, don't you dare. Yeah. Well, now I just made the mistake of eyeballing some seagulls on the top of that boat and I think we're in for some attitude. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, out onto the lake that way and then a whole bunch of locks. This is probably one of my favourite moorings now and it was definitely worth the detour from the Neen. It's a shame you can only stay for 24 hours. On the other hand, it's good that boats can't stay longer as that means there's more likely to be a free mooring available. It's about half a mile from the mooring pontoons back to the river and most of it's across the open water. The lake also extends about half a mile in the other direction. Michael's desperate to go exploring on the boat, but it's not a good idea as there's a high chance we'd get stuck in the shallow water. From a distance, the exit channel is pretty well camouflaged, but it becomes more visible when you get closer. In conclusion, whether you arrive by river or road, we highly recommend a visit to Overton Lake.
We're back on the main line of the River Neen now and we only have 60 miles to travel to get to Northampton and the end of our quest to complete the network. And if the rest of the Neen is anything like this, we're in for a really wonderful last leg, despite the 53 locks between us and the end. This is Milton Ferry Bridge, which is over 300 years old. It's Grade 2 listed and it's also a scheduled monument. It's built from local limestone and it replaced a ferry service, which is presumably where Ferry Meadow Country Park got its name. It's very reassuring when a bridge sign makes it undeniably clear which arch we should be travelling through. So we just got to the first lock of the day and then Michael has dropped me off and then um, obviously the guillotine gate is up so he's driven straight in. So the first job is lowering the guillotine gate. Does this counter mean that the guillotine gate on a Walton lock has been used 24,422 times? So, about halfway up now, and it's really lovely here. There's actually a mooring next to, right next to the lock. Um, so if we hadn't been not only going for half an hour, I'd be tempted to stop. There's a sign on the lock that says the guillotine gate must be left open, so Michael moors up and raises it. Okay, that's good. Only 52 locks to go now. This is Water Newton and this huge water mill was built in 1791. It's a stunning sight as we approach the lock in the sunshine. Apparently in the 1980s it was converted into residential accommodation. As you can see there's quite a lot of water at Water Newton Lock. In fact it's flooding over the lock gates as we arrive.
You can see the Riverside Village Church just beyond the lock. Eventually the water equalises and we can open the gates. It's looking like all of the locks need to have their guillotine gates left up, so Michael Moore's up again. This video was filmed in late September, so the river is pretty quiet. This is the first boat we've seen all day. This cable crossing the river came as a bit of a surprise. We've asked around and we think the most likely reason for it being here is to enable a floating boom to be deployed if there was ever a pollution incident as it's just upstream of a drinking water supply obstruction point. So that would make sense. We arrive at Wandsford Lock behind another boat. Thankfully, they spot us and they raise the gate again to let us in. We always say it, but locks are so much easier and more fun with two boats. I ended up walking between, well, kind of half running between the last two docks. And I've just got here and I'm waiting for the boats. And uh, we walked through a field of sheep and George just grazed on all the sheep poo. So he enjoyed it.
The other boaters said they'll stay behind and raise the guillotine gate again, so we go ahead and we'll wait at the next lock. So we got to the next lock and Michael is off to say hello to some dogs as usual um, and we're just waiting for the next boat and it's quite lovely here there's a big old barn or mill building there and behind the lock is the big cows. This time it's our turn to reopen the guillotine gate. Most of the guillotine gates on the River Neen are operated electronically as you've seen. This is the first one that we've come across that is manually raised and lowered using this huge reel. Lowering the gate isn't too taxing as gravity is on your side, but raising the gate takes a lot more effort. So the last look of the day, and I think that's Fothering Hay in the distance. Around the bend and we get our first view of Fothering Hay Castle ahead. There's a campsite here as well as some moorings and it's already another highlight for us on the River Neen. So hopefully you can hear us because it's quite windy. It is very, 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 very blustery today. Which made uh, going into some of the locks interesting. Yeah, we nearly lost the um, metal cap from our uh, chimney. 
because a piece of, well, a couple of pieces of wood that we've had sitting up here for a while, innocuously doing nothing, decided to blow sideways and hit the stainless steel cover that we have in place to uh, rain, wind and rain, well, rain more than anything else, from getting down the chimney. I don't know why, since we haven't had a fire in <laughs> six months, we didn't put a put our sauce pot on there, but whatever. This, by the way, fathering a castle, very is, exciting to be moored right outside a castle. Yeah, where Richard III was born. And Mary, Queen of Scots, was injured. Was, was anti-born. <laughs> yes. Yeah, quite a bit of history here. Um, so we've already been to the top, and I've decided, because I'm still training for my walk, and I've, it's just been flat everywhere, that tomorrow I need to run up and down that like a few hundred times. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, I need to read a little bit more about Richard III's early life. I know the story of Mary, Queen of Scots, relatively well. I'm still uncertain whether or not, like, well, basically this thing was taken down about 50 years after Mary's um, precisely timed demise. And, um, yeah, by that point, James I was King of Scotland, who was her son, so you'd think... I think she, he's also king, king of England. Anyway, one way or another, I don't know if he was involved in any way, but uh, the castle was essentially demolished because it had gone to rack and ruin. So, yeah. Just checking up on the dog. Just checking up on the dog. Um, there's a lot of rabbits up there. A lot of rabbit poo. That's how I know there's a lot of rabbits up there. <laughs> um, so far, really loving Deneen. Yeah, it's been really pretty. Lots of kind of curly cues and movements, lots of little offshoots going off to different places. Uh, lots of woody bits and lots of open bits. and Lots of cows, lots of bullocks. And lots of friendly boaters. What lots a few of birds. Saw a buzzard. Big Thank buzzard. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, friendly boaters. Um, some interesting new uh, water birds that I haven't seen before. They they were kind of neat because they both stuck their heads up and they both looked at us and then they both went and dived at exactly the same time. Synchronized like, Yeah, it was like a glitch out of the matrix sort of thing. But, um, yeah. But, yeah. but anyway, let's, uh, we might have two nights here. It's five pounds tomorrow on these moorings. Yes. I think it's worth every penny. And from what we were told, they show up before you actually get your mooring pins in. But our mooring pins are in. <laughs> so we're going to wait and pay Hope them when they arrive. Hopefully they're coming. Oh, George is, George is wanting to play. He's doing what? He's like rolling around on his back. Oh, well, that sounds cute. Where's... I don't think I can get enough out of the way. Where is he? He's, oh. he's behind. There he is. Oh, he's not on his Well, back he stopped end. rolling around. Yeah. Finish, George? Yeah. <laughs> he's a silly dog. All right. Let's... Yeah, so it's doing this ridiculous thing. Let's, let's go. Yes. So, that's us fathering a castle. Fathering hay and the moorings at the farms. Probably um, have a bit more of an explore tomorrow. There's a great big piece of masonry over here with some pieces on it. it, it it's kind of the last remnant of the castle that isn't just the mound. It was built up from and the, uh, I think it was a moat that goes oh, around definitely it. definitely a moat, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Anyway, bit of explore tomorrow. Rain is coming. Rain is coming, uh, as is winter. So... Thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you're on a time-lapse videos. Click that bell if you want notifications. And here comes the wet.